have you made, General Vitruva, in recruiting your Czech anti-Soviet battalion? You know, the Fuhrer counts on you. Yes, but it's extremely difficult. Our peasants and workers are, unfortunately, very sympathetic to the Russians. Perhaps production would increase if our scooter workers were allowed somewhat higher pay, since their food allowance is very low, frequently resulting in exhaustion. We'll admit readily that your workers may be underpaid as workers. But as an inferior race, as slaves, they're highly overpaid. Give them higher wages, you say, so they can print more of this underground propaganda. They distribute this criminal material every day in the Skoda plants. Every department is contaminated. Sein Excellenz, der Herr Reichsproteko. Diese Reporter über die Skoda-Werke sind ein einziger Saustall. Die verfluchten Schweine wollen einfach nicht arbeiten. His Excellency, the Reichsprotector, wishes to say that the reports from Skoda are a putrid mess. The stinking swine at Skoda refuse to work. In Skoda sind 37.000 Arbeiter. Und für diese zum Himmel stinkende Sabotage 
Er schießt von der Lumpe hier 50. Warum nicht 500? What did he say? 50 sind gar nicht. He says shooting only 50 is ridiculous. He demands at least 500 lives. He says 50 mean nothing at all. Ah! Ich werde die tschechische Munitionsfabrikation unter die Aufsicht der Gestapo stellen. Ich persönlich werde den Skoda durchgreifen. If I may, Ihre Exzellenz. Vielleicht gibt es eine bessere Weg. Das ist uh, not so drastic. It ist der Mann irrsinnig geworden, mich in diesem Kauderwelsch anzusprechen? Ich verlange, dass der Schicksal Deutsch gesprochen wird, verstanden? Deutsch, 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 Deutsch! Ich werde diesen tschechischen Gesindel schon einheizen und diesen Abschaum in den Skoda-Werken gleichschalten, als ihn hören und sehen vergeht. Auto! Those gentlemen who failed to understand His Excellency's last remarks. The entire Czech armament production is now transferred to my authority. Under the Gestapo, the Reichsprotector himself is superintend personally the necessary executions at the Skoda plants. Skoda! Good morning, Miss Novotny. Good morning. I hope I can have two pounds of potatoes. I'm sorry, Miss Novotny, but uh, perhaps tomorrow. The turnips are nice. Well, I guess it'll have to be turnips again. And a nice head of cabbage. Why is your motor running? Just waiting for my fare. You know that gasoline is ordered not to waste? Yeah, but my battery's run down. It won't start up again. Stop the motor. But stop the motor. Now, start it up again. I... I guess it must have charged up. So, you carry on this petty sabotage trick to use up our fuel supply. But the gain is I don't know, I can't understand oh, it. I had a crank it this morning. Try to the police precinct. Yeah, but it never charged Four up. Forward! Forward! Anya's arrested. Get going, quick. Pardon me, miss. Did you see a taxi cab waiting? Yes, a few minutes ago. But he seemed to have some trouble with the occupational police. They drove off with him. Thank you. Yesterday in der Richtung. The other sucht dort. Hey, miss. A man running out from that alley. Did you see him? Yes. In which direction did he run? You better go home now. 
and put it on the book. Thank you, Mrs. Borzak. Identification cards. Applause. Who started it? Answer me. No one here applauded. I demand, who started this applause? The unknown soldier. Get out your identification cards. No one permitted to leave. You stay here. No one permitted to leave. Keiner darf das Theater verlassen. Es verboten. Mister. What? Wait a minute, Arnold. What's the hurry? Bohemian Herald, new racing decree. Read all about it. Bohemian Herald, new racing decree. Who cares? We got the hangman. State of emergency. All groups forbid. Close all doors and windows. No loitering. State of emergency. to stay here. No, no, you can't. But why? Because of the taxi cab driver's arrest? I don't know. Orders. But I can't go home. Someone may have recognized me. But try a hotel. But they'll check all the hotels. Where shall I go? I can't tell you. I always dreamed of giving my little girl the most beautiful trousseau. But with these Germans, all the shops have been scraped bare. But, Mother, I can't imagine anything prettier. And it was yours. All it needs is a little cutting down. Cutting down? Now, look, Aunt Millie, I suggested that three months ago and every day since. Now there's only two weeks left. Hello, girls. Hello, Father. Hello, Stefan. Eileen. Nothing wrong, Stefan, is there? No, no, nothing wrong. Someone shot Heydrich. Shot Heydrich. When? Where? At noon on Gladno Avenue, or rather what we now must call Ludendorffstrasse. It's all in the paper there. Father? Yes? I think I must have seen him. The man who shot... Close the door. I'm sure I saw him. You haven't seen anyone. But I'm certain I have. You haven't seen anyone. Father, you don't have any connection. Oh, with... no, Monkey, hardly. I'm completely disconnected politically over 15 years now. It's simply that in such matters one doesn't talk. Example, you tell it to A. A entrusts it to B. B confides in C. C reposes the secret in D. And as it's not very far from E to F, F was specific. And G stands for Gestapo. 
Yes, I understand. <laughs> but to you, Father. Oh, oh, listen, come here. Come here, look. Here. Definition of no one. Not any. Not one. Not a single one. None. Not me, not your mother, not your little brother, not even your fiancé, yeah. No one is no one. Look, I've had that old battery for five years. Sometimes it works, sometimes it don't. It's full of quirks. They have some quirks too, brother. According to the Gestapo, they belong to a car burnt in a dump last October. Is that the late paper? Yep. Can I look at it? Your cave was a getaway car. I don't know nothing about it. You will talk at the Attention! By order of the occupational police, all restaurants, cafe, theaters, public buildings to close immediately. Curfew, seven o'clock sharp. After this hour, any person on the street will be shot on sight. You must have gotten over the border. There are no borders anymore. Trains are all stopped. Frontiers closed. Listen, if you only get out of Prague, that's all I want. Looks like they're in an awful sweat. You bet. <laughs> Excuse me, we have to close now. Thank you, sir. There must be some other way than assassination. What'll be the result? More terror and more bloodshed. It'll be like the student massacre at the university. But, Jan, those 120 boys gave their lives to tell all the world that we're still Czechs, that we'll always be Czechs. Yes, I agree on that. At least. Shush, Beda. Say, what's the specific gravity of phosphorus, future brother-in-law? I haven't the faintest idea. You got me there, Beda, I don't know. But you're a chemist, you ought to know it by heart. Well, Jan? Yeah, yeah, let me see now. Specific, uh... uh uh As a chemist, I only have to know where to look it up. You have to know it by heart, future brother-in-law. <laughs> Jan, you'll have to hurry if you're to be home before curfew. Beta, run into the kitchen and tell Auntie to wrap up something for Jan to take with him. With all the restaurants closed tonight, you'd simply starve. Oh, well, thank you very much, Mrs. Novotny. I'll say good night, then. Good night, Jan. Good night. Come. Tomorrow? Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Good night, darling. Good night. You got your name from the florist across the street. Sasha, you come on there. There's nowhere else I can go. Sasha. Yes, Auntie. No, 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 there's no one. You helped me once before, Miss Novotny. Yes, but... Sasha. Coming, Auntie. Coming, quick. In here. Put your book away, Beda. It's almost dinner time. Yes, Mother. Oh. Hello. What beautiful roses. Oh, Marcia. Aren't you going to introduce me? Yes, of course. Uh, Mr. Uh... Carl Vanyak. Won't you please come in, Mr. Vanyak? Uh, come. Uh, step on. I... Father, I want you to meet a friend, Mr. Vanyak. Your daughter and I met... Uh... At the symphony. My father, Professor Novotny. 
How do you do? How do you do? I had the honor of being introduced to your daughter at intermission. I had the score of the symphony with me. Oh, are you a musician, Mr. Barnier? No, only an amateur. I uh, happen to be a, an architect. I almost went along with Marsha that evening, only at the last minute I didn't feel well. Oh, that's too bad. But then again, I wouldn't have had the pleasure of escorting your daughter home. Oh, then you live in this district, Mr. Vanyek? No. No, I just happened to be in the neighborhood. And thought I'd drop by and pay my respects. Young man, do you realize that it's already after 7 o'clock? I have 6.30. The correct time is 7.15. Your watch must be slow, Mr. Vanyek. And tonight, that might be dangerous. Yes. I suppose I'd better run along. If you're on the street after 7 o'clock, they shoot you on sight. My brother. Then there's ready, Ellen. Oh, you mustn't think of leaving. Uh, Millie, set another place, please. Yes. Uh, luckily, Mr. Van Hick, we prepared for another guest this evening. You will join us at dinner, won't you? Uh, yeah. Well, I hardly know what to say. Don't say anything, Mr. Van Hick. It's quite unnecessary, isn't it, Marcia? Don't be deceived by this china, Mr. Vanyek. Turnips again. And cabbage. My husband likes me to use this service, just to retain the memory of the good old days. <laughs> Let me correct you, Helen. Not in memory of the good old days, but of the bad new ones. That is a meat platter. It contains cabbage. It should contain meat. That's why I insist that it be on the table before us. I agree with you, Professor Novotny. What do you think of the shooting of Heydrich, Mr. Vanyek? It was completely unexpected, wasn't it? Rather inevitable, don't you think, Mr. Vanyek? Yes. We're all very glad he managed to escape. Please, Mr. Uh, I'll see who it is. It was Mrs. Sasha. A janitress. All males over the age of 13 must register with the police before tomorrow night. Anyone without a police card will be shot. That lets you out, Beta. Apparently, they don't think much of check boys of 11. All right. Let them think that. There may be some news on the radio. Possibly. Beta, you can take a recess from that cabbage and turn on the radio. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks. Betty, you probably touched your food. Uh, I prefer bread. Now, careful. That's a that spread. Mustn't be. Ouch! Oh, no, I knew it. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, oh, dear. 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 Oh, my merry men all. I'm a little wounded, but I'm not slain. <laughs> it's nothing. I'm all right. I'll be all right, Mother. A deep, it'll need stitches. Oh. May I see it, Betty? Come out in the kitchen and put it under the faucet. It's all right, Andy. It's I don't right. think it'll need stitches, Mrs. Novotny. Do you have a bit of bandage, a little cotton, and some iodine? It's bleeding, so. I think we can stop that. All right, Betty. Can you hold that, please? Twist it. We interrupt our program to give you the latest order of the occupational authority. Any person aiding the escape of the assassin or providing him with shelter will be executed. All relatives of such accomplices are subject to the same penalty of death. The population is hereby warned to report any information leading to the assassin at once. Anyone withholding such information must reckon with the blood debt this monstrous crime has laid upon the entire Czech nation. Our geniuses upstairs think they can intimidate these mule-headed Czechs with public warnings. Dopes! It will need something more concrete to force them to surrender their beloved assassin. Something to make them jump. Chaka! Uh, what? Are you listening to me at all? Uh, I, I beg your pardon? What are you doing there? Uh, nothing. <laughs> I'll see. Yes, that's right. Chaka is spelt with a C. <laughs> Curious, aren't you? <laughs> Curious. 
Julius in what the Gestapo may have him fight on the honorable beer brewer Chaka. <laughs> I'll tell you, his beer is good. Prost. But he himself rather stinks. <laughs> okay, I'll inspect the weekends in here. You're a bit, sir. Don't talk German to me. We are going to police you fascinating people properly. I got to learn your crazy language to perfection. Here's the first list, Herr Inspector. That's good. Priests are always good. They do us more harm than anyone else. <laughs> oh, sting in every sermon. Listen, I have a good suggestion. Nikval, the poet. Nikval? What for? He is non-political. Writes only folk ballads, children's poems, fables. But Herr Gruber, if it's your intention to Germanize the protectorate, that's exactly where you should begin, with the children. You're an extraordinary, Peter Yochaka. <laughs> I'm sorry. Professor, do you think I might ask the janitress if there's an available room? here in the house where I might stay over? I happen to know there's nothing. There is an available couch in my study that I personally can assure you is not uncomfortable. It's already being made up. You're welcome to it. It's very kind of you, but... There's hardly any alternative, is there, Mr. Vanyek? I hope those chimes don't keep you awake. The Vatslav him? I should be used to it. I hear it every morning. Funny times. A man meets my daughter at the symphony concert once. Next week he moves in. You think the neighbors might gossip? What if young? I can't see why the neighbors should hear about it at all. Well, the janitress knows. She does? Yes. Who told her? We have our breakfast quite early, Mr. Vanyek. Since it is fair boat and to lecture at the university any longer. Some of my former students come here to continue their studies. Good night, Monkey. Professor, I must speak with you. Hey, you'll have to excuse me. It's rather late, and an old fellow like me can't quite keep up with you younger men as much as he'd like to. Good night, Mr. Vanyek. I hope you rest well. Good night, Monkey. Good night, Father. You don't need to tell him anything. He knows. You told him? I tried to tell him, but he wouldn't let me. Father's an old revolutionary. He was in exile with the Founders Republic. British Broadcasting. The Czech government in exile here reports that the daring execution of the hangman Heydrich is expected to be followed by a nationwide bloodbath, as savage as only the Nazi barbarian can be. Except for I'm in the wrong way, she must have put vegetables at your place many times before. Maybe, but I don't know her name. Pick it up again. Mrs. Dvorak. I'm prepared to devote to you all of tonight. Even longer, if necessary. Well? Uh, 
That's the girl. I want you to listen to me very closely, Mrs. Dworak. Do you realize where you are? Yes. And exactly where are you? Yes, Tapo. And you actually believe you'll walk out of here without telling us the truth? This girl, who sent our men the wrong way, she must have bought vegetables at your place many times before. Hmm? It is now 8 a.m. Last night, the Fear's own physician performed an extremely delicate operation on the spinal cord of His Excellency the Rice Protector, removing three pistol bullets. Hmm. Anything? No. Nothing yet. Several people have been arrested. It is reliably reported that the Gestapo have a definite clue that will lead directly to the assassin. The taxi driver? No, no. But who else? I don't know. I must leave at once. There will be an important announcement Wait. from the occupational authority. Taking personal charge, Chief of Gestapo for Prague, Kurt Haas, has ordered instant retaliation for the insufficient collaboration of the civilian population. Most severe measures are to be expected. They know nothing. If they did, they would not threaten. Miss Norbert me. Well. Who are you? What's your name? Harald Vanyak. Live in this house? For you. I am Professor Novotny. Whom are you looking for? For you. No! Why? No interference. On what grounds? For the loathsome, abominable crime committed against the per Person, das Herrn Reichsprotektor hat deutlich das unerhörte Betragen der tschechischen Bevölkerung gezeigt, die nicht im geringsten gesinnt ist, dem Geist der Zusammenarbeit zu entsprechen. Sie werden als Geisel festgehalten, bis der feige Meuchelmörder den Behörden überantwortet ist. And what if he is not surrendered? Das ist die Angelegenheit der Besatzungsbehörde. If I understand you correctly, sir, and for the benefit of my family and my students, the loathsome, abominable crime committed against His Excellency the Reichsprotektor or more correctly, the unheard of, traitorous behavior of my countrymen in failing to cooperate wholeheartedly with their German protectors compels you to hold me hostage, together with numerous others, I presume, until the assassin is surrendered, our lives becoming forfeit for his. I believe that is correct. Correct. Father, no. They can't. Oh, yes, they can. They can arrest me. They can arrest a hundred more. Indeed, they can arrest as many hundreds as they have on their lists. But I don't believe they'll find one single traitor among us. Nor in all the Czech nation. Why are you and these others? Some of my former students, I give them private tutoring. Or is that verboten too? Keep your mouth shut, or you get some real tutoring. Make yourself ready. How can you take my husband for something he knows nothing about? No interruptions. Ludmilla. Yes? Will you get some of my things ready? Just a few for the night. Yes. No razors permitted. I trust you will all continue with your studies. Don't let yourselves be snowed under at Valley Forge. Father. Good luck. Thank you. Now, please go. All of you. Step on. I'm frightened. I know, I know. <laughs> Monkey. Thank you, sister. Goodbye, son. Remember all this well. I will. I'm ready. My 
Priesthood, priest. What Roma, General? Forward car, Jew. Neckball, writer. Skalda, clerk. Peskacek, worker. Achtung! Which of you here is the oldest? All those over 50, raise your arms. You, your name? Professor Stepan Novotny. Sir, I'm not when you address me. Novotny. You'll take charge of this barrack. You'll be held solely responsible for the fulfillment of all camp regulations. State cleanliness must be maintained. No spit or filth on the floor. All shoelaces, suspenders, neckties and belts must be turned in at the Commandant's office within one hour. Understood? Don't shake your head. Speak. Father should have dressed more warmly. It would be damp and cold out there. He must give himself up or he's a monster. If I knew who he was, I'd go out and tell the police. Anyone in town should. Aunt Millie, it's no longer as simple as all that. Why not? Whoever helped him can't go to the <laughs> Gestapo after last night's broadcast. Why, it would be like signing his own death warrant. None of his whole family. Anyone who knows and helps him is as guilty as the assassin. Marsha. Jan. Look after Marsha. Marsha, is there something I can do? There's only one hope. That he gives himself up. Yes, I'm afraid so. Oh, well, darling, I'm sorry, but I have to... I have to get back to the lab. Yes. Funny. When I left you last night, I passed a chap coming upstairs with some red roses. Oh. Oh, yes. The florist sent them to my mother. She's one of his old customers. Oh, I'll see who it is. They closed up the school for the whole week. They set on a kind of hydric. But I heard they're using the rooms for wounded Germans from the Russian battles. How about Father? Nothing yet. Marsha, if you hear anything, be sure and let me know. I will, Jan. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. Goodbye, Jan. Goodbye, Dada. Oh, baby, your bandage is all filthy. It isn't filthy. It's just a little tangled. I'll fix it. No, I better do it. Come with me. You ought to take lessons from Mr. Vanyek. He's an expert at bandaging. You're next, Mr. Dedit. Good afternoon, Doctor. Good afternoon. Case history, Doctor. How's everything going? Well, yesterday I was afraid of complications, but today it feels pretty good. Here are the bandages, Doctor. Thank you, that's all. Two sedatives. Look at that. Naturally. Anyone who'd been through your last 24 hours. Yesterday, when Vanya was arrested, it looked really serious, so we had to leave you on your own. I understood. Well, you did a great job, Svoboda. Now they let loose their horrible bloodbath. Yes. They've already seized over 400 hostages. They anticipated hostages. Yes. Yes, we did, didn't we? Last night, I spent with the family of Professor Novotny, the historian. No. No previous acquaintance. His daughter helped me. She directed the black shirts the wrong way. The 
this morning. Tedich, I've decided to give myself up. Swoboda. Oh, I'm not trying to make any noble gesture or become a heroic martyr. Four hundred lives. Four hundred. Tedich, I'm only one. Only one. Have you thought of what must come when the Germans are driven out? You'll be needed, Swoboda. You've no right to surrender. Don't worry. They won't torture any information out of me. All they'll get is my dead body. The written confession and the evidence. The bullets they'll remove from Heydrich will give them that. The gun will be absolute proof. No. The underground has nothing to fear. But it has, Swoboda. Listen, you're a physician. If a man showing your symptoms came into this clinic, wouldn't you diagnose his case as nerves shot to pieces? Hysteria caused by exhaustion? Would you advise a patient in that state to make an irrevocable decision? You would not. Swoboda, you were chosen to act as a representative of the Czech people. The Czech people have executed the hangman. 400 lives. Yes, Swoboda, what is 400 lives? This is a war of millions. And this execution of Heydrich is only one battle in that war, but a most important one. And if you surrender yourself, alive or dead, the Czech people will have lost that battle. Every Czech will say to himself, we dare not resist. The Nazi terror is too much for us. Spogoda, three years ago, we lost our army. We stood on the streets crying like children and watched it surrender. So we built a new army, a ghost army that will haunt them till their blood runs cold. Now, you'd have this army surrendered too? about this Novotny family. I take it you were sufficiently cautious. They know nothing of me. I used the name of Banyak. Told them I was an architect. Are you sure you left no clues to your real identity, no possible connecting link? None, I'm sure. Did it? What about the taxi driver? Jumped out of the window at the Gestapo. I got nothing from him. I never met the man. I wish I had. Let me have that gun. You have a foolproof alibi, but with that gun and the bullets they have, they'd shoot it apart. Dr. Svoboda, may I talk to you alone? Nurse, please. What are you going to do? How did you happen to find me? Well, that's not important. It was Bader, your bandage, that gave me the idea you must be a physician. You said you hear the Vaslov hymn every morning. So, when I notice this hospital across from the church, I... But what are you going to do? Nothing. Nothing? Last night you spoke differently. When it was your life in danger, now you think you're safe. Now it's nothing, nothing to be done. Dr. Svoboda, you're the only one who can save my father. What are you going to do? I cannot surrender to the Germans, if that's what you mean. But they'll kill him for what you did. Let me explain. All right, explain. Explain why you let the man who helped you be taken away to his death while you stood there silent. But don't think that I'll keep silent, because I won't. I won't let you kill my father. I tell you, I won't. Miss Novotny, consider what possible good could it do your father, for whom I have the deepest admiration, 
if you denounced me. You would involve your entire family. You were counting on that, weren't you? You think you have us all under your thumb because we helped you. This is not a threat, Miss Novotny. It's a simple statement of fact, one which you must not forget. You have it all nicely worked out, haven't you? If I tell them, then all my family will be shot. If I keep silent, only my father will be shot. In other words, your simple statement of fact is, we are lost in any case because we were generous enough to save your life. You're just a cold-blooded coward. You're no better than Heydrich himself. Even the Gestapo couldn't be as inhuman as you are. Paycheck Bank. Gestapo headquarters? Yes, quickly. Yes, ma'am. Hurry, please. You must be out of your mind. You know what you're doing at all? Stop, driver, stop! I have no time now to give you a lecture on political principles, but haven't you any idea what's going on here? This is war, and you're in it. Who are you? Where are you taking Don't me to? Don't be frightened. We're not taking you anywhere. We just want to explain to you. Help! Let me out! Oh! What's going on here? This driver took me the wrong way. I told him, but he... Where do you want to go, miss? To the Gestapo. But he drove the other way, and, and then this strange man said... Strange man? Where is he? I don't know what she's talking about, so help me. I didn't hear the lady at all. I'm a little hard of hearing. I'm getting pushed around by these whizzes. All right. If you're blocking traffic, better keep moving. Johnny. <laughs> Why did you want to go to the Gestapo? Did they send for you? Come on, baby, tell us. Come on, out of it. No, no. They... Well, if they didn't send for you, what business have you got with those butchers? Yeah. What should a decent Czech girl want with a Gestapo anyway? Yeah. Who are you squealing on, you little Judas? That poor old driver? What did he do to you, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's... You needn't be afraid, miss. You wanted to be taken to the Gestapo? Yes. Have you received a summons, or do you wish to make a statement? I haven't received any summons. All right, miss. You'll be taken to the headquarters safely. Marshal Novotny, Herr Inspector Rita. Here's your pass, Miss Novotny. Right up. Miss Novotny, it'll be a few minutes. Oh, then perhaps I might go to the washroom. My cheek is bleeding again. Right across the corridor. First door to the left. Miss. Over there. You pass. You have been in Henrietta's office, Miss Novotny? Yes. And you already have made your statement? Yes. That's strange. That pass should be signed and stamped. There must have been some mistake. We don't make mistakes here! My father had nothing to do with the shooting yesterday. He was doing research at the library all day. You can easily get proof. 
And this is the statement you came to make? Yes. Uh -huh. But I understood only a few minutes ago you wanted to leave without giving us the benefit of this extremely valuable testimony. <laughs> we are very grateful to you for not leaving us. Just wait a minute. First, she tried to break out without seeing me. Now she wants us to believe that she came only to have her father released. Bonk! What does she look like? Young, quite attractive. Brown eyes, about 22, I would say. Brunette, five feet four. Yes. Hmm. I am sorry to keep you waiting so long, Miss Novotny. It's too bad for us. You see, before you explained about your father, I honestly hope. You came because of the one million mark reward. <laughs> Can you appreciate my disappointment? Roger. Wait over here. Is this the girl who sent our men the wrong way? Hey, you don't know her at all, hmm? Yes, I know her. She is Miss Novotny. Didn't Miss Novotny come to your shop around noon yesterday? No. You know what will happen to you if you lie. Yes. Run to me, dear. <laughs> Marvelous people, these chicks. <laughs> Stubborn to the end. To the bitter end, Miss Novotny. Get me Inspector Gruber. I'm glad you are not involved in this beastly crime. <laughs> you will, uh, no, uh, Gruber. Don't question her anymore. Make her feel safe. She's our only good lead so far. Tell her you let her go, but hold her here on some excuse, typing up the record or something. Long enough for us to work. Leader Novotny, 42 men. Form two straight lines. Oh, get up, all of you. Come on, sit down. Faster. And your feet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. What's your name? Vesely. Vesely. One, two, three, four, five, six, what? seven, eight, nine, what ten. Mean? What's your name? Sandrock. One. Nein, Herr Inspector. Nichts. Here are the report. The record of your statement and the incident on the street. Signed. Five thirty. In exactly 30 minutes, the first 40 hostages will be executed. Sign all four copies. By the way, your father is not among that 40. This morning.
You are free to leave now. Nobody. Ah, a little. Nasha, I didn't lose my head at all. Even when they found out about your friend sleeping here night before last. I'm really... Oh, don't worry. I stopped all chance of gossip. Nipped it in the bud. I told them it was your fiancé who stayed over. Jan. Jan? Jan, darling, I must talk to you. I must talk to you, too. Where have you been? We'd better go inside. I'll tell you where I've been. I've been at the Gestapo since 6 o'clock this morning. What did they ask you there, Jan? They wanted to know where I spent last night. And? I told them I was here, of course. Of course. Masha, what's this all about? Who is this man? What did they ask about him? And Inspector Gruber questioned me, wanted to know if I knew him. How did he happen to come to your house? He dropped in just after you left. Oh, to see your father? Was it something political? No. No, nothing political. He... He came to see me. You? You see, we met at the symphony last week, and yesterday he... He dropped in, quite unexpectedly. And stayed for the night? It was curfew hour. He had to stay over. Charming coincidence. He was the man who brought you those roses, wasn't he? Yes. No, the flora sent them to my mother. That was a lie, too. Jan, you don't think I... I had anything to do with that man? Masha, I always thought that between us, everything would be above board. Open, clean. Darling, you know I love you. Please try to believe in me, Jan. Masha, why don't you tell me? Don't ask me why. If you love me, Jan, you must believe in me. You're all I have to believe in. You know that. Don't let me down. Jan, I'll never forget that you believed in me. Know what name? Gestapo. You're under arrest. We checked your story, Miss Novotny. In all of Prague, no architect called Vanek exists. You're lying. Where did you say you met him first? At Symphony Hall. You said you met him during the intermission. No, he had the seat next to mine. And he told you his name was Vanyak? Yes, Vanyak. Karl Vanyak. What's his real name? I don't know. What illegal organizations does your daughter belong to? None at all. Masha's a music student. This Karl Vanyak, isn't he one of your husband's former colleagues from the university, a fellow teacher? Professor Novotny never even met him before. Where does this man live? How should I know? He didn't tell me. Is it usual for your niece to entertain strange gentlemen at night? No. How many times did he sleep over in your apartment? Only that night, and on account of curfew. Why did he come that particular night? I don't know. Answer properly. You know we have means to make you talk. Maybe you have heard about the walls below. What was his exact reason for coming? A formal call. To pay his respects to my daughter and us. Then why did your sister-in-law say it was your daughter's fiancé? Because I was afraid the neighbors would gossip about a stranger. What was this stranger's real name? Mr. Varniak. You're lying. I'm not lying. No? We'll soon find out. You know where your sister is right now at this moment? She's where everybody ends up who doesn't tell us the truth.
family sticks to the same story. But I don't believe that this man Karl Vanek exists. This letter arrived at the Nobody apartment half an hour ago by a special messenger with a bouquet of roses from a Mr. Karl Vanek. Vanek? Interesting. This is ridiculous. You told me the man doesn't exist. That's just it. He doesn't exist. Yet here he is. You're not going to tell me we have been through all this trouble over a silly love affair. Looks that way. Well, what do you suggest, Gruber? That we release the girl. What? What else can we do? Are we supposed to interfere with lovers? Or are we? Marcia, I had to come and offer all my sympathy to your mother and you for your father's arrest. I haven't been able to get that tragic scene out of my mind. Ever since yesterday morning, I've been in the depths of despair, trying to quiet my conscience. I came to offer my help. Help? You're talking of help? The one who's responsible for all we've been through? You spent the night with your conscience troubling you. We spent it with the Gestapo. My whole family is still there. You're the one the Gestapo wants. You killed... Any, any feelings I, I ever had for you, the things that always been true, merely because you spent a night here, Mr. Vanyek? Masha, I can't tell you how sorry I am for all the trouble that my thoughtlessness has brought to you. Whatever you think of me, I deserve, and more. Tell me the truth. All right, Masha, I will. I gave you a false name. My name is not Karl Vanyek, and I'm not an architect. I am Dr. Fratajek Svoboda, resident surgeon at St. Pankratz Hospital. Right, Why didn't you tell me that right away? Maybe we'd better go in the living room. Out here, we might be overheard. Right. Masha, I must make a confession. I... I love you. I did take advantage of the curfew law to stay here overnight. But now it seems that my silly little escapade is boomeranged. And I've fallen head over heels in love with you, Masha. And that's my only excuse for all the trouble that I've made you. I think I understand you much better now, Dr. Svorbida. And you do forgive me? I really ought to blame myself. After all, that I didn't to you it. Turn it down. Well, this puts us right back where we started. There's something fishy about all this. Why can't it meet where you are leaked, Gruber? You've wasted your time over a cheap romance. Release the family and start from scratch before Berlin comes down on our necks. They are lovers. I remember exactly, because it was the same day we heard His Excellency was shot. Are you sure of the time? I have the operation reports right here. Dr. Svoboda assisted me while I performed the cholecystectomy. During the operation, he was in charge of the suction pump apparatus, as usual. Dr. Kesselbach, I understand you also function as official physician for Stormtroop number 34. You were. And Dr. Svoboda was there that day, throughout the operation? Yes, for fully two hours. He stood only a few feet away from me. You understand, Herr Inspector, these intestinal operations require continuous control. I understand, control. Dr. Kesselbach. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. Thank you, Professor. Petra. Heitler. <laughs> Frankly, I dislike to be beaten, even by our most distinguished poet. 
You know, Mr. Neckval, I've always wanted to meet you personally. And now at last... I always hope to meet you, Professor Novotny. And now at last... Excuse me, Mr. Neckval, I, I wonder if I could bother you. Yes? I happened to scribble down something today, just a few lines for a song, maybe. And I thought you being such a big writer, if you had the time, you could please look it over and fix it up a bit. My friend, I have all the time in the world here. Until these hoosies. <laughs> well, this is a scribble. <laughs> Here, you, you better read it to me. Fellow patriots, the time has come. Fellow patriots, there's work to be done. Raise the invisible torch and pass it along. Keep it burning. Keep it burning forward on the road that has no turning. Die if you must for a cause that's just, but shout to the end, no surrender. Ever onward, no returning, till the senseless butcher will be learning that his war isn't won till the last battle's done. Carry on when we are gone. No surrender. Of course, you could make it a lot better. No, my friend. Let's have it just as it stands. Uh, how does it go again? Fellow patriots, may I see it, please? The time has come. Fellow patriots, there is work to be done. Raise the invisible torch and pass it along. Keep it burning. Keep it burning. Forward on that road that has no turning. Die if you must for a cause that is just, but shout to the end. No surrender. So we must answer, terror is the murder of hostages. Ours is the slowing down of the German war machine. By the end of the week, all war production must be lowered a full 25%. I work in the office of a former hardware factory, now making parts for heavy tanks. A few days ago, a telegram came from Berlin to stop immediately manufacture of five special tank parts. Because of new model tanks, they've started making for the Russian front. Luckily, I saw the telegram before anyone else saw it. So I tore it up and threw it in the stove. But what will happen? Oh, we'll go on making the same five parts. But when we send them to Germany, they won't fit the new tanks. <laughs> Emil? I think you all know sufficiently, by my work for this group in the past, that no sacrifice has been too great for me. And yet I, I tremble before the bloodshed that threatens so many innocent victims. 850 hostages have been arrested by now. More than 250 are already dead. The very flower of our Czech nation faces systematic annihilation. Scientists, leaders of commerce and industry, artists, even priests of God. And so I ask, regardless of sentiment, can our nation afford the loss of these outstanding citizens? I say to myself again and again, this man, whoever he is, who executed the hangman, is a great patriot, a hero. But still, I can't help myself. I, I keep thinking, if this man would surrender himself, if he would say, here I am, do with me what you will, but spare the innocent, wouldn't that be better for our beloved country? So I ask our group here, if it should agree with me, to move to submit my proposal at once to the Central Committee. Already people are saying that it's sheer lunacy to sacrifice hundreds of lives for one. Emil, where did you hear people saying such things? All over Prague. I've even heard people blaming the underground for this new wave of German terror. Not where I work, and I keep my ears open. Right. I've listened to many women, some of them wives and mothers of hostages. Not one of them spoke a single word against us. I'm absolutely against the motion. I must ask to be excused from voting on this matter. My older brother was one of the hostages executed this morning. All those in favor, raise their hands. And now the nays.
I think the nays have it. We'll have to adjourn now. It's getting near curfew. Leave one by one at irregular intervals. Does anyone in your group know anything about you except your first name? Only the leader, Bartosz. Well, anyway, you better not attend any further meetings. You're the only one in this group involved in the Heydrich affair. Anyone who took part in it automatically should have severed connections with his group. Oh, I understand. I've just told the doctor here not to attend any meetings of your group until further notice. Dr. Pilar, use the stairs, please. I think, Bartos, this group will have to be dissolved immediately. I know exactly what you're thinking, that peculiar motion. Do you know this man well? Certainly. He's been with us two years, contributed a lot of money. How does he function in your group? We use his beer wagons to distribute our leaflets. He's the big brewer Chaka, Emil Chaka. Do you remember, Bartish, about two years ago in Pilsen, when that whole group was betrayed to the Gestapo, 12 executed? With the Pilsen raid. Yes, I know Chaka was suspected for a while, but it was established that the traitor spoke perfect German. And a very thorough investigation proved that Chaka doesn't speak a bit of German. You think I put myself in danger? In all probability, you took yourself right into kingdom come. But you suggested it. I suggested you feel out the ground, test their morale. I didn't suggest you climb out on a limb and sew yourself up. Mm. Take some cheese, it's good. Oh, no, I... I've no more appetite. Maybe... Maybe it'd be safer if I left town. Sorry, sir. Once you work for the Gestapo, you work for the Gestapo. Then I insist that you give me a special bodyguard. I will not do anything without it. You'll do everything. And like it. But, Herr Gruber, how can you treat me like this? I've done so much for you all these years, and for Germany. And why did you do so much for us, Chaka? Because, as a, as a real Czech patriot, I realize our entire future depends on unconditional collaboration with greater Germany. And I thought you did it for business reasons. For certain favors, and certain very profitable military contracts. Oh, may I? Nice gold lighter. You like it? You wouldn't think of bribing me <laughs> with a gold lighter. Chaka, chaka, chaka. Suppose I pay you for police protection. Oh, just like life insurance. Yeah. How much of a premium would you be willing to pay? How much do you want? 2,000 marks. 2,000 marks per week? Per day. 2,000 marks per day? Only a few days till we round up your friends. Then you just drop the insurance. Say, five days, 10,000 marks. Suppose it lasts a month. So what? Another 50,000 marks. Why, Chaka, you're a big beer magnet. Just another drop in the barrel. Uh. Alloy. Make that check payable to the treasurer of the Occupational Police Fund. That's it, Chaka. I am the treasurer. I know. Yes? Your father will be executed at 6 o'clock this morning. You'll be allowed to see him before he is taken away. 
In half an hour, a police car will call and take you to the camp. That's all. You have ten minutes. No more. <laughs> Monkey. Yesterday, I was questioned about that gentleman who visited us. We do, but everything turned out all right. He came back to apologize and offered me any help we might need. That's good. How is Mother and Ludmilla and Beda? How is he? Mother tried to see you. I was permitted to write her a letter. I, I think this censor will let it through. It was only personal. I... I also started a letter to Beta. <laughs> I was sure it would not pass. I'll tell it to you, Marsha, and you'll repeat it to him. What I now want to say to you, my son, is meant for when you're a grown man. The now mighty invaders will have been thrown out of our land for quite some time. What? I hope you will be living in a free land where the people are truly governed by themselves and for themselves. Those will be great days to live. Those will be great days to live. In a land where all the men and women and children will have enough good food to eat in time to read and to think and to talk things over with one another for their own good. When such great days do come, don't forget that freedom is not something one possesses, like a hat or a piece of candy. The real thing is fighting for freedom. And you might remember me, not because I've been your father, but because I also died in this great fight. Because I also died in this great fight. Time is up, Laura Neep. You still have his life in your hands. Who was the man you helped escape when you sent our men the wrong way? I tell you, I sat on that investigating committee myself, and Chaka was entirely cleared of that betrayal in Pilsen. Because the traitor spoke German and Chaka doesn't, hmm? Yeah. Yet when he came to Prague and bought his brewery, Paid with a check on the Deutsche Bank in Berlin, according to a little research of my own. Maybe Chaka does understand German. Listen, I've got an idea. Might work now after these two years. I don't know, but we can try. What? We can use Rudy for this. Hello, Beda. Father was shot this morning. Shot? But I... Masha! Jan, will you come with me, please? I'm going to the camp to claim his body. But, Masha, here's a list of all those that were executed this morning. Your father's name is not among them. See here? Here, under the ends. Only four. Navatol, Napadol, Navi, and Nimichek. But I saw him on the truck this morning when... Yes, Miss Novotny? 
Or your father. No. That list is correct. No. Just a little mistake. You were right, Jan. Mother! Mother! They play with human beings like a cat with a mouse. I don't care. I don't care. As long as he's alive. Bartis just called me to meet him for lunch. A sort of informal meeting. What shall I do? Go! What? Listen, I'll arrest him when I see fit, not before. What about those two? You still only know by their first name. But, but they would kill me! All right, you'll have your police card. Where do you want them and when? Back room. Cafe Krama? <laughs> Mr. Emil. Well, Emil. Emil. Hello, Emil. I want you to meet my uncle, Mr. Dedich, just in from Kladno. You're having lunch for this? Yes. Matuska? But I've only time for a quick bite before I catch my train for Karlspad. And passing Emil. through, I thought I'd say hello to my nephew. <laughs> well, my pleasure, sir. Uh, won't you be seated? Uncle, Matuska? Emil. Yeah, you. Ladies and gentlemen, just between ourselves, I don't recommend the goulash. But the paprika liver? Simply pre-warmed. <laughs> and speaking of food, or rather no food, I heard the most wonderful Hitler story yesterday. You understand German? Yeah, yeah. You'll excuse me. I can only tell it in German or I'll ruin the whole joke. Well, I know a little schoolbook German. That is, if you want me to hear it. Oh, that's <laughs> certainly. Sure, you'll translate it for us, Martha. <laughs> <laughs> now, Goebbels kommt zu Hitler. Adolf, we have genug Lebensmittel für fünf Jahre. Fünf Jahre, sagt der Führer. Wirklich? Jawohl, sagt Goebbels. Fünf Jahre. Ach, sagt der Führer. Das muss ich sofort Göring sagen. Oh, Hermann. Um Gottes Willen, sagt Goebbels. Sagt dem Hermann nichts. Nur für uns zwei. Dich und mich. <lacht> I, I happen to remember another Hitler joke. Hitler says to, to one of his elite guard, I forget how it goes. Yesterday you showed a very good memory for the teaching of your Gestapo friends. No, no. When you tried to convince us that we should surrender the man who shot Heinrich. No. So you don't understand German, you slimy scum. I, I don't, I swear. Take him back. Keep him quiet. Get out, Patterson. Through the window. Hilbert, pull it tight, Snow. Get out through the kids and daddies. Go ahead, we'll cover you. with you up here. What we want is the identity of this man, Dedich. Aldrich Kratky, engineer, huh? Yes. As an educated man, surely you are intelligent enough to visualize the unpleasant experiences ahead of you. You understand, Aldrich? When Herr Gruber says unpleasant, he's merely being polite. 
Well, what's he doing here? He belongs here, Gestapo informer. I don't get it. You'll get it soon enough. Right through your head just before we knock it off. Well, oh, you stinking, fat, crawling snake, you. We we'll shut your filthy trap for you, you bunch of agents. You sabotage! You don't have to prove to us that you are not one of them. Katarina Honiga, private secretary. You sabotaged your factory very cleverly. Perhaps you're also clever enough to want to avoid a visit to our vault downstairs. Perhaps you'd prefer to talk to me in private. No, I can tell you right here what I think of you. You pig. Yes, you better not let her see you alone, stool pigeon, or she'll scratch your eyes out and make you chew them, you fascist bloodhound. Big talk. Ten minutes down below and you'll beg them to kill you. <laughs> your mothers were slimy rats. Their milk was so water. <laughs> Take them to the vaults. All of them. Tell them I want to know about this deadish. Tell them that. Up there. <laughs> Are these all the volunteer speakers you have? The Commandant, Barrack 2 and 3 fail to produce any volunteers. Herr Commandant, in our Barrack number 5, they also try to prevent... Quiet! The... We'll be ready to begin your speech in exactly two minutes. Yes, sir. I just have another idea to jot down for my speech. That's not necessary. Here are your speeches. We must find the path to loyal collaboration. And our very first step must be to surrender the assassin. Just plain common sense. I was always against using force. Not one of us would hesitate to die for the true welfare of the nation. But people of Prague, I ask you, shall we perish for the vicious act of a murderous maniac? Stop that, Quisley! Surrender the Easy for you, Sock. You're not going to be shot. Shut up and sit down! Keep quiet! The Germans have succeeded in part in shattering the unity of the city. Many people are now using the word assassin. Whereas before, they spoke of him only as the executioner. If I may suggest, perhaps you'd all better know exactly what Dedich wants you to do. He's at my apartment now. His condition is really serious, shot through the lung. But why did he go of all places to you? That was a terrible risk to expose you. He took every possible precaution. He changed taxis a number of times, went through buildings and backyards, until he was dead certain that no one followed him. But he could have come here just as well. And we would have called in another doctor to treat him without involving you. He did not come to me just for me to treat his wound. What else? To give me in detail my instructions. Instructions? Where do you come into this? What instructions? As Dedich sees it, we are faced with two vital problems, each dependent upon the other. If we could find a way of saving the lives of the remaining hostages, or as many as possible, we would at the same time restore the unity of the city. It would be a tremendous victory. But in the end, it's either the hostages or you. We can't save both. I don't see any possible chance of us getting these two birds with one stone. As Dedich sees it, there is a chance. What about those bloodstains in your cab? Uh, myself, I never would have put two and two together. But the car washer here calls me tonight and tells me he found on the back seat in my cab drops of blood. Just then I was home eating my soup and... Not interested in your soup. What makes you think I'm interested in a cab? Where some passenger maybe had a nosebleed. But Herr Gruber, he recognized the description of Dedich from tonight's papers as one of his passengers. Where did you drop this passenger? Well, that's the trouble. I... I don't remember. Maybe he was the one I took to Cherney Street. But maybe not. Hey, Dr. Mar! We got a record of every one of his fears today. We could put on an extra search squad and go to every one of these addresses. Listen. You tell me at 11.30 at night, a man came into one of 15 houses sometime this afternoon. And you really think this Dedich, if it was he, will kindly wait for us till we come to call on him to pay our respects. Get him out of here. Go home and finish your soup. To snow, though. Ah, Lord. <laughs> hey! Hey, you with the soap! What was that address you think you dropped them at? 
Cherney Street. 61 Cherney Street. Cherney Street, Cherney Street. Cherney Street, 61 Cherney Street. Cherney Street. Cherney Street. Cherney Street. Cherney Street. Cherney Street, 21. From 21 to 61 is 20 houses. Dr. Svoboda? Yes. Gestapo. You live here alone? Yes. You didn't by any chance receive a visit from a gentleman with a bullet wound? No. You can't go in there. Stop this nonsense. Stand out. Miller! Aufmachen! The situation here would certainly tend to exclude the presence of any third person. Sorry, but you see, we are looking for the uncle of a certain Mr. Bartosz, who asked me to deliver his last farewell in person. Building from cellar to roof. Every room and closet. Come in, Doctor. Come. No, 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 Miss Novotny. Please. Remain just as you are. I'm only staying a little while to catch my breath and smoke a cigarette, if I may, Doctor. Well, well, my young friends. I don't mind admitting. I'm surprised. You see, Doctor, personally, I have never been fully convinced of your marvelous quick success with Miss Novotny. And you, Miss Novotny, you surprise me even more. After all, you engaged to be married in a few weeks. But I suppose in wartime, life runs a lot faster. Inspector, there's a limit to these insults. Of course, Doctor. My humble apologies, Mademoiselle. Why don't you leave me alone? Just a few more puffs. You see? I had no idea I'd find you here. At least not tonight. In my stupid way, I thought I'd find a certain gentleman who in turn would help me find that other gentleman. You remember, whom you helped in the Karlskasse. That's all very interesting, Inspector. But if you insist on keeping us company, perhaps you'd like a glass of wine to go with your cigarette. Well, well, Doctor, I'd be delighted. You have no beer. Of course you have beer. Beer wouldn't be quite a thing in such a romantic atmosphere. I'm sorry, Inspector. The, the rug. You better be careful when you stumble near me again, Doctor. My boy is here. Got a little nervous just then. Fehl ausgeführt. Horak, I thought you might be curious to meet Dr. Frantisek Svoboda. Surgeon in St. Pancras Hospital. 
The same gentleman who visited your fiancé that other night. Under the name of Karl Vanyek. Inspector, why did you have me brought here? Orak, I felt we both have the right to know the whole truth. You ought to know what your fiancé is up to. And of course I should too. Well, I guess all this becomes a rather personal matter now between you three. Uptrading. I think I'll leave you alone. Good night. Jan, you must... Well, what are you staring at? Do you think you own me? You were lying to me all along. Yes, I was. I just fell in love with him. And, well, that's all there is to it. Can't you understand that? I can't. I'm sorry, Franto, that all this happened. All right. Looks like both of us were at the solution tonight. Huh? Raus. Find something, Miller? Nothing at all, Herr Inspector. Am I free to leave now? Not yet. What do you say to having a drink? And me? That's right. an order. Miller? I want you to watch this house closely. If those two in there try to leave, see where they go. Superfell, Herr Inspector. I'll have Sherman leave you before morning. A small leather case on the desk, the hypodermic. Come on, sweetheart. Get it off your chest. Take it from me, no woman should be trusted too long. Ain't it the truth? Be a sucker, big boy. That's more where she came from. Wow, well, six o'clock already. What you say, girls? Let's go over to his place. That's an order, too. You shouldn't talk. This wound is serious. I haven't much time. I must finish telling you. Miss Norton, all our thanks. You're a good fighter. <coughs> Almost everything in this plan depends on you. It will be very difficult. <coughs> I believe the people of Prague will come to help us. His office can't seem to get in touch with him. He was out all last night. That must be the little cutie who let him down so hard. Your German promised 20 marks. We could pump something out of him about her cheating before. It was like pulling teeth. Couldn't even get him to talk about her. Why does that flatfoot have to know so much about this dame's love life? All he told me was, they caught her cheating last night. Myself, I figured it must have something to do with, uh, politics. Because Gruber says, how could a nice girl like this run around like that, when her father's one of the hostages going to be killed any minute? Come on, Fatty, wake up. Let me sleep. You'll get your money tonight. I'll be waiting. <laughs> So long, big boy. Just pretend you never knew her. Toodaloo.
possible now to tell his real name? No, but his name will not be forgotten. One day the school children will honor it. In retaliation for this cowardly murder of the Reich's protector, it is ordered that commencing at two o'clock today, executions will be carried out every two hours instead of 24, unless the assassin is surrendered. Pardon me. Good morning, Mr. Chuck. Absolutely wrong. I'm not wrong. Please, miss. Please. You must meet me. I have to talk to you alone. Miss, what do you want with this gentleman? It is nothing. Absolutely nothing. What do you mean by that? Such impertinence. I've... I've... Gestapo. Talong oh, Shoma. Well, of course, that's... That's naturally... That's different. That's... Note, I, I don't know this person. I've never seen her before. Is now what name? We'll clear up the matter somewhere else. I think you better take the gentleman along to headquarters, right now. But this is absurd. I'll report you to, to the proper authorities. All right, all right. I, I will not go. Orders is orders. I'll see that you're properly taken care of also. And uh, where is the note she wrote it? Here. I recognize you. Must talk to you privately at once. Well, what does it mean? <coughs> Mr. Watney, this time you are going to talk. You recognize Mr. Checker as whom? What do you want to say to him alone that was so important? Let me tell you, Herr Ritter, it's very simple. She says she recognizes me as someone she helped escape on the Karlsgasse, from the black shirts. The young lady insists I'm the man who shot Heydrich. <laughs> me, of all people. <laughs> it is perfectly ridiculous, of course, Mr. Checker. But, uh, just wait here a moment. Please. The following three persons may step forward. No, no, you can't take me. I won't go. I won't go. I helped to get the assassin. I want to see the commandant. 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 Following three persons will step forward. Nick Wall, Skalda, 
Potroba. My name shouldn't be counted in. That was the arrangement when I spoke for you on the radio. Chap! All three of you, port, march! Miss Novotny, perhaps you are afraid because you lied to us before. But if you tell the truth now, I promise to overlook that. Remember, we won't stop the executions until we have the assassin. In a few hours, in any case by tomorrow, all hostages will have been shot. The odds for your father are growing smaller by the minute. This is your last chance, Miss Novotny. I was on the Karlsgasse that day. You saw the assassin run out of the alley? Yes. It was the man I saw in the restaurant. The brewer chucker? Yes. In what direction did he escape from the Karlsgasse? Around the corner on Dresdenstrasse, just where I told the officer. Did you see him running until he was out of sight? No. There was a passing cab and it drove off with him. For your sake, Miss Novotny, I am glad you added that detail. It confirms exactly with the voluntary statement we obtained from the same cab driver. Ritter, bring in Chaka. And the horse cab driver. That's him, all right. <laughs> I've never seen this man before. You picked him up on the corner of Karlskas and Dresden? Yes, sir, and he said, drive as fast as you can. Where did he ask to be taken? Uh, Some place with furnished rooms, with no questions asked, like I told you this morning. But I... Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. The man's got me mixed up with somebody else. Herr Standartenführer, during the time of the assassination of His Excellency, the late Reich Protector, at that very time, I was having lunch in the Golden Quail, where I always eat, just like today. You can check it quite easily. Do you remember the day the rice protector was shot? Naturally. What check doesn't? It was last Wednesday at noon. Exactly. And on that day, at that time, did Mr. Chaka here have lunch in your restaurant? Now you... No, Your Excellency. No, Mr. Chaka didn't come in that day. I remember it like my own birthday. I held his usual table for him, Your Excellency. I even said to Albert here, maybe Mr. Chaka's sick at home or something. But Novak, I was there. No, Mr. Chaka. I know because I put on the table your favorite Rhine wine, the old Riesling. But I had to take it off when you didn't show up. No, you're all mixed up. You, how can you make such a mistake? Please try to remember. I was there. Freddy. You brought me a pack of cigarettes. I, I dropped them on the floor. You remember? No, Mr. Chaka. That was the day before the shooting. Pauline. Didn't you check my hat that day, as always? Didn't I even pinch your cheek? And didn't you say no, Mr. Chaka? And didn't I tip you nicely, as always? You always do, Mr. Chaka. But not that day. You didn't come that day. You're crazy! You're all of you crazy! What's going on here, anyway? What is the meaning of all this? I demand an explanation. Stop shouting at me, Mr. Chaka. We demand an explanation. Where were you at the time of the assassination? I told you. I told you exactly in the Golden Quail, eating. And after lunch, I, I had a business conference with Mr. Thomas Poulton, the barrel manufacturer. Yes, in his own apartment uh, until 5.30. How do you remember the time so well? Because at six o'clock, I had another appointment right here in the Gestapo with Inspector Gruber. I was with him till away after midnight, helping him to prepare the list of... The list of the hostages. Provoca! Meistid! And Peskacek! Goodbye, Bessie. Goodbye, Monsieur. Come on, come on. 
Raise the invisible torch! And pass it along. Keep it burning, keep it burning. For we're on the road which has no turning. Die if you must for a cause that is just. And shout to the end. No surrender. Stop the collision! No return. Silence! I regret that I must inform you that your witness, the barrel manufacturer Poulter, was one of the hostages executed at two o'clock this afternoon. Poulter? Shot? How did he get on the list? I had business with him. I, did, I didn't suggest his name. I suppose I ought to apologize for neglecting to notify you. In any case, his widow, Mrs. Poulter, testifies you never appeared for your appointment that day. What? But here is another lady who can tell us the exact reason. I don't know this woman. Mrs. Nimitz, last night you testified that on the day of the assassination, a cabby brought a certain well-dressed man to your rooming house. Yes, this man here. Will you repeat your testimony, please, just as you gave it last night? Well, he came at exactly half past 12 noon. I showed him a room for three marks. He told me he was expecting a lady friend, and if I wouldn't mind, and I said, well, if you guarantee she's decent, who cares? So then he gave me five marks. Lies! All lies! Why do you listen to these treacherous checks? How can you take their word against mine? I protest. You know I'm loyal. For years I've kept you informed of the underground. Only yesterday you got seven of them through me. Seven. Only yesterday. How can you be so unfair? Will you kindly permit the witness to continue? Uninterrupted. Will you go on, Mrs. Nimitz, please? Well... No lady showed up all afternoon long. Just heard him walking up and down the room. And after a while, he comes out and says he wants to telephone somebody if I got a phone. And I says, even if I could afford a phone, I wouldn't have one. Because with rumors, it's more trouble than it's worth. And then about half past five, he comes out. Wants to see the afternoon paper. All about the shooting of the hangman. <sighs> Rice protector Heidrich. And then he just put on his hat and went. But this morning, after I was questioned and went home, I remembered something I found that this gentleman left over in the room. Here, I brought it with me, even though it's real gold. E.C. It has your initials, Mr. Chucker. I, I don't understand. I had it this morning, I'm sure. I must have left it in the restaurant. This is a frame-up, a fantastic frame-up. Don't be preposterous. Are you trying to say that the whole city of Prague is conspiring against you? None of these people know each other at all. A minute ago, you said you had no telephone, didn't you? Yes. All right. Now I'll prove that everything you said was a filthy, dirty lie. And this whole thing nothing but a criminal conspiracy. She said I was in her rooming house between 12.30 and 5.30. Very well. She also said that she hasn't got a telephone. Then how was it that at 2.30 I was talking to somebody on the telephone? And who was that somebody? Gestapo Inspector Gruber. I demand that Inspector Gruber be brought in here immediately to confirm this. And I also demand the arrest and investigation of every single one of these slimy perjurers. Call Inspector Gruber. We have been unable to contact Inspector Gruber all day. His office is still trying to locate him. Just for a pick-me-up. Uh, 
No more beer around? No more beer. What's so funny all of a sudden? I like that lipstick. What lipstick? All over your face. I see. Yeah. That lipstick on the doctor's face looked so perfect, not like this, all smeared up. You're right, Jan, my boy. Your girl is still all yours. They staged it, but a little too perfectly. Thanks for the assassin. What do you mean? If they staged that bedroom act, then that uncle must have really been there. And your little girl put one over an old man grew. <laughs> And why? Because one or the other must be the assassin, Dr. Svoboda or Uncle Dedich. And your little sweetheart is the cold-blooded accomplice of same assassin. But this time she's going to talk, and talk fast. Assassin, Mr. Chaka. Seems to have a perfect alibi. No less than Gestapo Inspector Gruber. Yes, Miss Novotny. Inspector Gruber. You just wait till he gets here. But what about all the hostages in the meantime? The executions will cease the moment the case is finished. Not before. But if Gruber confirms Chaka's alibi, then every one of these witnesses today, and you first, go to the wall together with the hostages. Well, now we'll go look into this fine alibi of Dr. Svoboda. It's really worth looking into, you know. Then we'll take care of you and your faithful sweetie. You'll excuse me, Mr. Horak, but I'll have to hurry. Just relax. Can you tell me where to find Dr. Svoboda? He's in operating, assisting Professor Kubitschek. Thanks. Close the door, Peter. Plenty lucky for you. Mother was worried about Masha and sent me to ask you. Attention, Gestapo Inspector Gruber. Wait. Attention, attention, Gestapo Inspector Gruber. Inspector Gruber, report to headquarters at once. Peter. Peter, go over there. Wait. See if the Gestapo comes poking around. If Masha shows up, don't let her go up there. I won't, future brother-in-law.
St. Francis Hospital and step on it. Dr. Swoboda. Oh, Inspector Gruber. You're looking for me? Yes. Just a few questions, Doctor. Where can we talk undisturbed? Here, in the locker room. Tell me, Doctor, when you fellows operate, you always wear these masks? Naturally, against infection. I thought you said we could talk here alone. It's all the same. My colleague, Dr. Pilar, Inspector Alois Gruber, Gestapo. You were the other one at the operation the day he shot Heydrich. Exactly, Inspector. Dr. Pilar, as you say, did take my place that day with the mask. Very clever. May I use your telephone, Dr. Svoboda? No. You better not use that phone. You better put it down, Doctor. I'm going to put it where it belongs. If you think you are going to rush me from both sides, that I can get only one of you in time, then you are going to be unpleasantly surprised. I can shoot this gun a lot quicker than both of you can jump. Not bad, Doctor. That was close. But stand right where you are or you get a slug in the gut. I was at the doctor when I heard the radio call for Inspector Gruber, so of course I came immediately. You say you have everything this morning, Mr. Horak? Yes. You see, the inspector and I went, went to a cabaret together last night, and, uh, well, uh, he stayed all night at my apartment. Uh, when did he leave you? Oh, I should say about 10 o'clock this morning. Did he happen to say where he was going? Yes, I believe he did. I think he mentioned something about having an appointment with a Mr. Chaka at his house. Where? Yeah. Chaka's house. Free the prince to Chaka Haran. Thank you, Mr. Farak. I'm sorry, but we have to hold it like the other witnesses until all this is settled. Fragen Sie in Chaka's house now. Inspector Gruber heute Vormittag da war. Uh, Mr. Chucker, when did you last see Inspector Gruber? Uh, I, yesterday afternoon, uh, here in the Gestapo. And where were you this morning, from 10 o'clock on? At home, uh, until noon. And then two of Gruber's men came to escort me to the Golden Quail. Gruber wasn't with you before that. No. I've told you, I haven't seen him at all today. Excuse me. Yeah? Chaka. 
between 10 and 12 this morning, Inspector Gruber was with you at your home. No, Herr <laughs> Who said that? Your butler. Why, Herr Haas, that's impossible. The man can't be insane. I demand to see him face to face. At 10 o'clock this morning, when Inspector Gruber arrived, I showed him into the study. Then Mr. Chokov sent me down to the railway station for a timetable. Joseph, where did you get these hallucinations? Haven't I always paid you well? Why do you tell such lies? Will you kindly keep quiet, Mr. Chokov? Go on, please. And when I returned, the inspector had gone. Where is the study? Right there, sir. But it's locked. After Mr. Chaka left, the maid wanted to go in to clean, but we couldn't find the key anywhere. Break the lock. You can't do that. It's genuine antique. Grover's calling card. Someone put them there. Timetable. Timetable? Switzerland. You said your partner had hallucinations, Mr. Chaka. Your Excellency, I assure you, I... My death... Uh... I protest! Checkbook. Chaka, this check for 10,000 marks. Whom did you give it to? To the Occupational Police Fund. I'm not interested in for what purpose you gave the money. But to whom you gave it? To Inspector Gruber. So ein Schwein. Yours, Mr. Chaka? No. I never had a gun. Yes, I'm not sure this gun was made in England. It's got exactly the same caliber as the bullet that killed the Reich Protector. Hang off him! Herr Haas, I... All this is false. Completely false. Your Excellency, if you only get Gruber here, all these lights would be blown away in two seconds. The whole thing is a frame-up! A horrible frame-up! Dort im Schrank ist der Mimeograph. Herr Haas, Herr Haas, Herr Haas, Herr Haas, Herr I swear I am! The underground planted all this! They want to pin the assassination on me! Ah! Haas! Herr Standartenführer! Was? Schirmer, downstairs! You are free to go. Chaka was the assassin. He even found the gun with which he shot Heidrich. The remaining hostages will be released in the morning. Have you any way of telling whether my father was... No. This gun must have been working for both sides all the time, you know. Looks like Gruber got onto him, but wouldn't be bribed. Not Gruber. So Chaka had to get rid of him. <laughs> Pull around the corner. 